All right. Excuse me. Sorry. Uh, all right, so I just want to finish uh, doing a couple of examples of the software. Uh, so just the other night, uh, in response to a request from Roger, I wrote a little function to give the matrices of the action of the simple roots on the cell representations. Uh, it's not in the version on the on Git yet, but it, it will be shortly, and I just wanted to show you how that works. So, um, so we, we, we saw this uh, print w, whoops, w cells. Uh, this is the example, we're in SP4, there are five cells of those sizes, and there's all this extra information in this output, the induced graph on cells, and, and for a particular cell, besides li listing the three representations in the cell, it also lists their tau invariance, and via some arrows, some other information, and basically this information right here is what's necessary to compute the action of this, uh, this, the, the volume group on the cell. And that's what I've implemented. So first of all, um, let's set cells, is it W cells of this plot. So just um, S0 is 
squared. And I'm going out on a limb here. I, I, I wrote this kind of quickly. It might not be right. So far, so good. And what's the braid relation? Well, the this is a length of a bond of length two. So S zero times S one times S zero times S one should equal S one times S zero. Pretty cool, huh? <laughs> so this is indeed a representation of the Ba group, and the exercise is. Um, the, what's the cell 257? Um, decompose into um, irreducibles of W. So remember, W is the dihedral group of order 4, uh, of, the, the, of order 8. And um, the, the representations are at dimension 1, 1, 1, 1, and 2 dimensions. <coughs> so, anyway, the information is all there. Uh, this is the group is SP4. And so W is the volume of type C2. Oh, wait, it's not. Yeah, that's right. <laughs> All right, questions before I turn it back over to Peter. Yeah. Okay, well, I didn't get very far in what I said I was going to do, which is basically prepare preparatory material for what Roger and Jonathan were going to talk about. But, so let me get a little bit closer to that. Um, and I think most of the computers, there won't be too much computer stuff in what I'll have to say now. The computer stuff will come with, with Jonathan and, and Roger, hopefully. So, um, let's see. So, so oftentimes you're kind of interested in um, computable, but not complete information about representation, its character, something like that. And so you attach some interesting, maybe relatively speaking, computable invariants, and those are the, I'm just going to talk about a few of those now uh, that will show up later today. So, uh, so let's, so those are so cool. Associated varieties of different flavors. Okay, so, Let's let X be an irreducible GK module. The most, uh, so I'll, I'll start with the associated variety of primitive ideals. So let I X be the annihilator in U of G of X. So just everything in U of G that kills X. So this is a two-sided ideal in the enveloping algebra. And I can take uh, a filtration compatible with the degree filtration on the in in enveloping algebra and consider the associated graded two-sided ideal in the symmetric algebra. So it's just a two-sided ideal in the symmetric algebra of G and then define associated variety of x to be um, uh, the variety cut out by GUR of i of x living in g star. Okay. It's a very simple-minded invariant that you can attach to this module over this. There it is non commutative U of G, which is almost S of G. Okay, so now if, if X it has an infinitesimal character, or is 
said. So for example, if x is, is irreducible, then this associated variety of x is living in the nilpotent elements of G star. So to say it has an infinitesimal character means that the annihilator, you can write down um, code dimension one ideal in the center of the enveloping algebra that uh, annihilates x. And so that imposes a restriction on uh, what variety is cut out by a of i of x. And according to results of constant, that restriction is exactly uh, what I've written down here. Okay. But in fact, uh, more so, uh, more is true. So this is for Olinsky. Well, let me just preface it by a, a little, a little more. So if, if G is um, uh, the group that's the complex group floating around, then this is going to be G invariant um, uh, some variety of the the nilpotent elements. G acts with finitely many orbits on the nilpotent cone. So this associated variety, I should say, the associated variety of let me continue writing the associated variety of I of X of the annihilator of X. Sorry. This associated variety is a union of closures of nilpotent orbits, complex nilpotent orbits on, on N of G star, but in fact it's the closure of a single one. So there exists a nilpotent orbit O in G star such that the associated variety of I of X is um, bar. So what this construction, this theorem, um, does for you is it attaches a complex nilpotent orbit to every, well, in particular, irreducible Harshandra module, uh, irreducible your G module. And so um, it, it's, it's done this way. OK, so now an interesting question is, uh, well, as I remarked, as, as you all know, there are finitely many or, uh, nilpotent orbits complex nilpotent orbits, how would Atlas compute something like this? If I gave, uh, I gave you a parameter from irreducible a GK module, uh, could, could it tell you what the nilpotent orbit was? And that's kind of tricky. Uh, I'm not sure what the best answer to that is. I mean, you would, and, and I guess maybe the answer is that so far, I don't know if you have an answer that so, so far that this isn't this isn't fully answered in Atlas. Okay, so now I can do something more refined, which David defined. Instead of just looking at the uh, U of G, actually the annihilator in U of G, and seeing what that tells you, uh, David came up with this, the following refinement. So let X of J be a good filtration. So K invariant on X. So what this means is it's, it's exhaustive. Um, oops. Uh, it starts somewhere. There's a few other properties. I mean, the, the, the most interesting property is is that um, so I mean it's a, it's always contained in I should say so it's compatible with the degree filtration. And uh, for um, J large enough, it's equality for all P. And 
So it's compatible with the degree, if it's an exhaustive filtration, it's compatible with the degree of filtration. If you go off far enough, then um, it takes the jth piece of the filtration to the p plus jth piece. So this is designed, uh, so what the good condition means is that um, the axis is finitely generated. Well, good filtrations always exist. And they're designed so that the associated graded is a finitely generated at a curve UG module, this S of G module. Okay, so let me, now we've brought in the action of K by requiring the filtration be K invariant. And so, so what you've done then is you started with X, you've gone to GER of X, so let's say irreducible. Uh, so now this is a finitely generated. Uh, this is an S of G. invariance the filtration means that this action of S of G descends to S of G mod K. So you've gone from an irreducible GK module by passing to the associated graded of a good filtration which always exists uh, and you've gotten an S of G mod K K module. And then David's definition is that the associated variety of X uh, is the, the support, the closed points of the support of this uh, of group X. So this is living inside of G mod K star. And uh, it's K invariant. The K action is coming along. And uh, if I start with something irreducible, the same results of constant uh, tell us that this actually lives in the nil point cone. So the associated variety of X is a K invariant, it's closed, the definition, K invariant closed subvariety of the nil potent cone in G mod K star. Okay. So, so now, so, so the, the recap is if X is reducible GK module, generally if it's uh, finite length and has an infinitesimal character, um, then um, you, you've got the associated variety of I of X, the annihilator construction. This is a complex, this is a nilpotent orbit. And then you've got the associated variety of X, but what is this thing? Well, uh, it's, 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 it's K very closed subvariety, no potent elements. Costin Wallace this time says that there are finitely many uh, such orbits, so it has to be uh, a union of finitely many closures of K orbits on the So these are new potent K orbits of G mod K star. And in fact, the construction can be refined so that each one of these orbits comes with a multiplicity. If you think of a, 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 a finitely generated S of GK module as a coherent sheaf on G mod K, and you think of this support this module is the support of that sheaf, then you can keep track of the rank 
of the sheaf along the reduced components of its support and supply multiplicities here. Presumably that would be something that Roger talked about. Okay, so again, you will find that in many of these OIKs, I'll talk about, first of all, I want to say a theorem about relating these, uh, these two invariants, uh, but then talk about how you might help to parameterize them. So, so here's the theorem. That, um, so in the setting above, each uh, of the i k is a k invariant, obviously k invariant, Lagrangian in in uh, oh, it's complex no potent order. Oh, so complex no potent order comes with canonical symplectic structure, uh, and each of these is Lagrangian in that structure. So, so in particular, well, the dimensions of each of these guys is half the dimension. Oh, and then this came up in uh, David's talk. Um, this is the GK dimension. And another thing in particular, if I take the G saturation of this K orbit, then I get this one. So this David's invariant is a refinement of the complex orbit that you get from the considering the primitive ideal. Um, you take that, that orbit and, and intersect it with G mod K star. Uh, those, the irreducible components there turn out to be these, these K invariant Lagrangians, which are the possible, uh, whose closures are the possible irreducible components of the, the, the refined invariant. So this is the information. What is the less than This one? Uh, uh, yes, GK, uh, yeah, so there should be no, it's, uh, it's supposed to be a hyphen, so. Uh, it's got von Kirlock dimension. So remember, in David's talk, uh, you add up the dimension. Somebody's talk. Uh, you add up the dimensions of the k types of a fixed um, up to a fixed height. That's a quasi polynomial. And then there the, was the, uh, discussion, Mark led discussion of how you would actually potentially compute that in Atlas. Okay. Right, so um, and so the and. So, 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 so an easy exercise is that uh, the associated variety of x is equal to the associated variety of x tensor f. Uh, I should say. Uh, well, the associated variety can't get bigger by tensor. No, this, I think this is okay. So, so you just can work from the definition that I gave, and um, so that this is f is any finite dimensional. So as a corollary of that, and the interpretation of the cells that I gave, uh, uh, kind of the end of somewhere in the middle half of or the second half of what I talked about this first installment this morning, that if x and y belong to the same cell, so maybe I should now switch it. If, if gamma and tau are two parameters that are cell-related, then the associated variety of the irreducible parameterized by gamma is the associated variety the irreducible parameterized by tau. That's another way to say. So associated varieties are constant on cells. Okay. The refined associated variety is constant on cells. So in particular, the, the, the one that just deals with the annihilator and enveloping them is also constant, the less refined. 
So this gives you some idea of how you might compute, use the cells to compute associated varieties. So, for example, um, if 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 if, um, if you can locate in particular, I should say, if you can locate some tau in a cell and compute. That, then you computed and so explicit here. Okay, just obvious consequence of this corollary. So uh, that's actually a good strategy for computing associated rights. But the uh, turns out to be quite powerful with a uh, winning example here is if uh, G is UPQ, and then Barbash and Bogan showed that every cell uh, contains, so uh, a module in form AQ, and this turns out to be trivial. <coughs> and what I'm about to explain is that the AQs are one of the few examples of uh, representations where we can compute everything about their associated varieties. So, uh, and probably this calculation is in some sense due to them, or maybe predated the definition of associated variety. Uh, and what they, they pro, in, in general, the general G. cells, that comes down to computing uh, the Kajdalistic mode and change of basis matrix. Uh, it's, you know, we, we know how to compute which uh, derived functor module, or which modules are in the form AQ, the good range of a particular block. Um, so that's all computable, but the, the kind of mystery object here is how you would possibly parameterize um, no components. So how could you possibly parameterize so we have Alice parameterize, uh, say, K orbits on the no public 
Cohen and Jim Rod Kay stuff. Seems like a complicated thing. So let's let's do um, the example of SL2. So we don't get too lost in the weeds here. So G is, is SL2C. Okay. So the complex no-potent orbits, the G orbits, no-potent elements in N of G star. Ah, sorry. So start with the complex no-potent orbits. That's just Jordan form. That's the zero orbit and everything else. Um, it's a full orbit. And um, N of G mod uh, of G mod K star, well, that just is uh, the, the P plus and the P minus. If you, if you think in terms of SU11, one, one, it, it's just these two lines here intersecting in zero. And so you have OK zero, and then the orbit of this uh, along this line and the orbit along this line. So the K orbit's on. So you have two, I'll say k plus and k minus. OK, so this actually looks pretty good um, because, so what's uh, KGB for the complex group SL2C? So, so this bit of imprecision, if I really wanted to uh, to talk about the complex group, G would be SL2C cross SL2C, as we discussed, and K would be diagonal. But there, KGB just looks like this. It's, um, it, it's, it's kind of the diagonal uh, copy of the flag variety in, in pairs of flags and everything else. And, and KGB for SL2R, seen that a lot. That looks like this. And so now it's completely obvious that the way to parameterize nilpotent orbits for SL2C is by KGB. The, the, this, this diagram matches the closure order for G orbits on N of G star. This uh, matches on the upside down closure order for KC orbit, K orbits on G mod K star. And, and the and so you would hope that you could make something like that work in general. What the Okay, so 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 let me let, let me say a few more words. Um, let me say a few more words. 